wonderful that we can celebrate the, the birth of one of our friends. And 
uh, he was basically getting rid of population uh, control, I guess. And, and, you know, I praise God for godly mothers. Because in this day, with rampant abortion and things like that, you, you realize what abortion is all about? It's about population control. Well, that's what it really comes down to. And so um, it takes godly parents to say, no, you know, I'm going to raise this child up. I'm going to make a difference in the child. And, and uh, so, so as, as, uh, um, as the soldiers were coming and, and get, you know, um, ki literally killing these young male children, the mother's heart, Moses' mother's heart broke. She's like, no, this child's a special child. And I'm protecting this child. And, and, you know, her life was on the line. If she broke the king's command, she could, the family could have been killed. And so she put that baby's life before her own. And that is the mark of a good parent. That is the mark of a good mother and father. To say, no, I'm putting the, the value of my child over my own value. And, and as parents, we all understand sacrifice. Is there any parent here who has never sacrificed? I don't think so. It, it's, it's, it's a costly thing. It, it doesn't, it's, and I'm not just talking about financially. You know, and children are expensive. <laughs> but it costs you of your time. It costs you of your heart. It costs you of just ministering to that child. And, and it's a blessing. So she, she kept her child. She rescued her child from... from the, the Egyptians. And it says here in verse 24, By faith Moses, when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Here's, here's the thing we've got to realize. is the, why, How did Moses make these choices and these decisions? He was, he was raised in, in an Egyptian family, in the king's family. Where did he learn these values? He learned them from his mother. And we're going to be seeing that in just a moment. In Exodus 2, 1 through 11, it says... And a man of the house of Levi went and took as a, as a wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, dabbed it in asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark was among the reeds, she sent her maid to go get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the, the baby wept. We've all heard baby is weeping already, right? And it says, so she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to, to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go, so the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So he called, she called his name Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of the water, now it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out to his brethren and looked at their birds and saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brethren. 
Now, what, what it was, what was going on was he was being raised in the Egyptian schools. You, they, were, they were the top schools of that day. The Egyptians, they were like just, you couldn't get much higher than, the, than their, their, their schooling and their knowledge. They were um, the top. And so he was, he was going through their schooling. Where did he get this knowledge about, you know, his brother? He went to visit his brother. How did he know that they were his brother? That's right, his mom. How did he know that, that, um, that he was a Hebrew? Somebody told him. His mom. His parents. See, Egypt, they, they had multi, multitudes of gods. They had so many different gods that they, they worshipped. But he knew of the one true God. See, when, when, when Moses, when, when he was first introduced to God, this was after he, he killed the Egyptian for beating on the, on the uh, slave. After that happened, he went in the wilderness. And after a time, he saw a burning bush. This bush was burning, but it, it wasn't disintegrating. It, it stayed intact. And so he went over to this bush. And as he went over the bush, there was a voice they heard it. And, and the voice said, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. So he obeyed and he went forward and, and God introduced himself to Moses. And he said that I am the God of your fathers, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now Moses, he didn't say who. He, he was like, he didn't say who are they. But he didn't learn about it in the Egyptian schools. Where he learned it from was home. He learned about the God of his fathers. He learned about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when he was young. And that's why I want to encourage parents to instill these values into your children. Instill the value and the knowledge of God into your children while they're young. Because when they get older, it's going to be a part of them. Children are, especially at their, their youngest ages, they're like cement. When you can mix them. Mix that cement up, and, and it, it will solidify into whatever shape you want it to be in. And that's the way it is with children. You can put good things into your children, and it will be a concrete foundation for the rest of their lives. A concrete foundation. And that's what Moses' mom and dad did. They instilled godly values. They talked to him about the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He knew who God was. And so when God introduced himself to, to Moses, he wasn't saying, who are you? He knew exactly who God was. And, and that's, that's what it is with the children. We, we encourage them in God. We share with them. We minister to them. And eventually, one day, they're going to get an invitation. And God's going to speak in their lives. And he's going to say, I'm the God of your parents. There's going to be a burning bush experience for our children. And they're going to know who God is because of the godly example that the parents have portrayed and shared with them. It's just an awesome thing. And that's when they can receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. When, when, because all of us have to make a choice. All of us. See, we don't teach infant baptism here. We teach that you must believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and confess Him with your mouth and then you'll be saved. That's Romans 10, 9 and 10. And so what we do is we instill godly virtues and we, we, we share our God with our children. And as they get older, then, then now God opens up the invitation to them. He's like, you know, he, He's embracing them and they're embracing Him. And that's exactly what Moses did. Moses embraced the God of his fathers. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on now. It says in, in Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says, Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. 
Now we know that in the school systems and in society, in the movies, and all these things, they are putting stuff into our kids. There, there is no child, I don't care if they're, they're homeschooled, they're not immune to everything in the world. There, there are things out there that are going to touch every one of our children. Now, I think if they're homeschooled, that might be tapered, and praise God, uh, that would be a blessing. But, but, and, and I think when, when children are homeschooled, the, the one nice thing about it is that they never hear about, you know, uh, evolution. They, they don't have it pressed into them. That, you, you know, you came from the goo to the zoo and then to you. Right? <laughs> that that you're, you're like, a, you know, ancestor of a germ or something. I don't know. <laughs> or the, the predecessor, whatever it is, of a germ. Uh, you know, that, that you're, you know, you're a monkey, you know, and I don't know, that ain't how. <laughs> you know, they have not found the missing link. Although, I do think that I've seen a couple of them around. <laughs> I do. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, really though, it's, you know, the, in the society that we live in, the world is shaping or trying to shape our children. The world is trying to form our cho our children into ungodly people. That's why it says in Romans, uh, Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. But it goes on to say in verse 2, but but do not be conformed to this world or shaped to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that you will prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And that's what parents do. You are shaping your child. You're, by the grace of God, you're instilling good things into, the, into your children. And, and just like a potter has a will, and, and he's shaping that clay, you are doing that. You know, and sometimes... You've got to get some of the rough edges off of, you know. Sometimes children take some of the rough edges off of us. <laughs> any any, any uh, parents ever get some rough edges taken <laughs> off of you? Yeah. Amen. You know, they teach you how to trust God. <laughs> children will teach you how to pray because you'll be praying for them. You'll be like, God, help me. I don't know what to do. I don't know how... I've never been down this road before. And you know, kids don't come with, uh, you know, uh, a complete instruction book. Yes, we have the Bible, but the Bible doesn't tell you how to change diapers. It doesn't ch tell you how to have a curfew or um, how to completely discipline your child in a, the perfect way. Now, although it does give some good suggestions, good uh, thoughts, uh, you know, spare. And this isn't biblical, but. Uh, it, well, it's biblical, but it's not a scripture. Spare the, the, the rod, spoil the child. The Bible actually says that if you don't use the rod, you hate your child. No, that's pretty strong stuff. And uh, be, Well, you know why? Because what you're doing is you're helping that child. You're protecting them. Amen. You know, and you're keeping them from making, uh, well, you're trying to keep them from making all the stupid mistakes that maybe we've made along the road. <laughs> So, you know, um, but the world wants, wants to teach kids about the, and, and it's getting into the school systems, alternative lifestyles, pro-choice, or what I call pro-death. There's nothing, there's no choice about pro-choice. It's, it's all about abortions, you know, evolution. All these things are coming, and they're not just coming through the school system. They're coming through the movies. They're coming through the television. They're coming through society. Uh, they're trying to shape us. And praise God, we have God's book here. Amen. We have the Word of God. And we need to, to be instilling the Word of God into our children so that they have their mind changed. Their mind is set right. Their mind is being renewed. And the only one who's going to do it is you and your church. And if you don't do it, and if your church doesn't do it, it's not going to be done. Somebody is going to put a mark on your children. That's right. And God wants it to be you. He wants it to be a godly mark. God wants his 
stamp of approval on your children. Amen? Amen. There's one last scripture I want to share with you. This is in Psalm 127. It says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor and they labor who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. What this is saying is, and, and in context, we're going to be looking at this in context, what he's saying is that if you, no matter how much effort you put into your children, no matter how hard you're trying to raise your children in a godly home, with, with godly character, instilling you know, godly virtues into your children, sharing the Lord with them, you can't do it by yourself. You need God's help. It's, you know, uh, people who are trying to raise their kids without God, it's going to be in vain. Building a house without the Lord's help is in vain. Try, trying to protect your children, and there's some protective parents out there. Trying to be, uh, protect your children without trusting God will, will make the, your children resent you. Because you'll be overprotective. And so, you know, you need God's help to be praying for them. To be trusting God with them when you can't be with them. Did you, you know, did you notice that there's times when you can't be with your child every moment of the day? You know, like when they start growing up, become teenagers, and they, they begin to, to realize that they're smarter than their parents. <laughs> Which they're wrong, by the way. <laughs> but uh, but yet you know they're they're learning their independence and they're 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 beginning to to develop and beginning to you know um, have their own thoughts about Amen. life and things. The beauty of it is this: while they're young, you can begin to shape the way they view things. You can begin to help them trust in God, letting God build in their life. And so, so you don't have to, you know, stay up late worrying about them. That's why it says, for he gives his beloved sleep. Parents, trust God, and you'll sleep a lot better for it. <laughs> Amen? Because you're not going to be able to be around them every moment of every second. You're going to have to trust God. In context of what I just read there, it says, behold... Children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Your children are a reward. They're, they're a treasure that God has entrusted to you. But you still have to trust God with them. And so, you know, um, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has a quiver full of them, they shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. And so what this is saying is that your children, what you're doing when you're raising your child is you're sharpening them like arrows in a quiver. And what, what an arrow is, it's for, for protection, and it's for, you know, to provide, you know, um, Sustenance when, when a person goes hunting. They're using an arrow. This is saying your children are your arrows. Your children, you, you, we need to have straight arrows. We need to have arrows that are going to fly straight. And so we need to all, already be, you know, you don't wake up one day, pick up a bow, and, and you're an expert at shooting the, the bow. It takes time. And I'm no expert at it. But it takes practice. You're practicing on your kids. <laughs> and, and you need help while you're practicing on them. You're going to make mistakes along the way. But God will give you the grace to be successful. But the object of it is you want the arrows to fly straight. You want them to hit the mark. And so your arrows are going forth. And your arrows are going to gonna make an impact. Amen. And that's why we're raising our kids is to make an impact. Impacting our society. And, and how do we want them to impact our society? 
in a godly way. That's that's our heart. As as godly parents, we want our children to be raised up, to be godly, to, to be them arrows that are shot forth. Those arrows that are going to hit their mark, the arrows that are going to make an impact, they're going to accomplish something that's going to build the kingdom, that's going to bring glory to God. Amen. That's what our children are. They are a heritage from the Lord, and we need to begin to sharpen those arrows, begin to make sure those arrows are straight, so that when we shoot those arrows, they'll make a powerful impact. Amen? Amen. And it says, they shall not be ashamed. You know, the when we raise up our children, our children, are, you know, they're not going to be apart from it. That when they get older, they won't be apart from it. That doesn't mean that there might be a, a few challenges along the way, you know. And so, you know, I know with me, uh, I was a different kind of a child. Norma always says that you were different, all right. But, but I, I didn't go off and do a lot of things that the kids did. And God just grabbed the hold of my life at such an early age, such an early, you know, time. I mean, there were people who spoke into my life and shared Jesus with me. I received them at the age of 10, and that was the best thing. I don't have the big testimonies of how I was on drugs and off, way off, you know, uh, gallivanting around and all that partying stuff. I don't have that testimony. I have a different kind of testimony. Mine is a keeping testimony. Amen. God kept me from grief. God kept me from, from getting hurt. God kept me from all these things. And so it's because of the investment that people put into my life at an early age. And I'm telling you parents that you are in a prime position for with influence. Parents have influence. You have more influence in your child's life than anybody else does. Unless you, you know, leave the throne of parenthood and let someone else do it. And that's not what God wants. He wants the parents to say, yes, Lord. Their, their quivers, their arrows in my quiver. Amen? And I am going to be skillful in where I want you. I'm going to send them out, and they're going to make an impact for you. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for each person here today. I thank you, Lord, for the grace that you poured out on the parents. I thank you, Lord, for mothers. I thank you, Lord, for fathers. Lord, I thank you that, that the men and women are raising up their children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. That they're training them up. And Lord, that they're, they're making their arrows straight and sharp. And Lord, that their children will make an impact in this world. We thank you for our children. They are a reward from you. And Lord, we thank you and we thank you and we ask you for the grace to, to do what you've called us to do. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.